Welcome to our Sunday night video for June the 19th, 2022 from Park Street Christian Church in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. I'm Pastor Steve Altide. I want to share tonight a piece written by Jacob Fay uh, back earlier in May entitled, We Must Remember the Power of Prayer in America. We Must Remember the Power of Prayer in America. On June 28, 1787, at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin made a providential motion that would change the course of history. At the time, after more than a month of embittered deliberations and fierce debate, the framers' attempts at crafting a new, more affecting governing document for the young nation appeared to be grinding to an unsuccessful halt. As one delegate, Luther Martin, confessed the convention was, and I quote, on the verge of disillusion, scar scarce held together by the strength of a hair, end of quote. When Franklin made his motion, the question of state representation, an issue identified as a, and I quote, formidable obstacle, capable of rendering all of our fond hopes of a constitution abortive, end of quote, threatened to derail the proceedings. Franklin called the whole auspicious affair, and I quote, melancholy proof of the imperfection of the human understanding, end of quote, and then he proposed a solution. And I quote, In this situation of this assembly, groping as it were in the dark to find political truth, and scarce able to distinguish when it's presented to us, how has it happened, sir, that we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights to illuminate our understandings? The sage asked. I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is profitable that the empire is it profitable that the empire can rise without his aid. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessings on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business and that one or more of the clergy of the city be requested to officiate at that service, end of quote. Now, it may be impossible for us, this side of heaven, to determine whether or not these words actually saved the convention from its impending wreckage, but the convention was nonetheless salvaged, and multiple founders later attributed their success to divine causes. To those who knew just how close their efforts had come to failing, the best, and perhaps the only, explanation for how the new constitution had been, as Alexander Hamilton said, and I quote, suggested and agreed upon by such a diversity of interest, end of quotes, was that God had miraculously intervened on the nation's behalf. Well, here we are, a few hundreds of years later, our nation once again finds itself in a precarious place, and maybe the most precarious since the Civil War. Um, our future appears uncertain, and so many are not being taught the background of uh, where our nation came from, for example, what I just shared with you. And it seems that the work of our fo founders may be on the brink of failing and falling apart once and for all, but we, if we remember where we came from as a nation, we will know hope is not lost. I have to confess, I am very concerned to the point of, of anxiety at times over the future of our nation because I know about the critical race theory stuff and a lot of stuff that the 1619 Project, those kind of things that are being taught to undermine our foundation. And so the question confronting believers today, I think, is this, will we have the humility to do what Benjamin Franklin did so many years ago? Will we have the humility to turn to God and pray for this nation? I think we must pray for revival, pray for our nation, um, and pour out everything that we have to ask God to preserve the blessings of liberty that we have been afforded in this country. We must not forget the awesome power of prayer and the God who answers our prayers. He has saved us before. 
do we still believe that he could do that again? That's the question of the hour. Um, and again, it troubles me when I see so few show up for prayer meetings and prayer times where we can join together and pray for our nation and pour out our hearts together for our nation. I want to challenge you to regularly do that. And if you're involved in another church family someplace, please help uh, your pastor to spearhead such an effort in those in your congregation, wherever you're at, on behalf of our nation. And we will still be Christians if America falls. It'll be a lot different, um, especially for those behind us that follow us, our children and grandchildren who are Christians in the future, if America falls. But we can still have our spiritual freedom, of course, in Christ. But we have been blessed with the most prosperous nation in the world's history for a long period of time. And I, for one, would like to see those blessings and privileges continue. And I'm quite sure that you would as well. So join me in praying fervently for our nation in the days to come as we move towards our 246th birthday as a nation. God bless you as you do.